Hey everybody, we're gonna make some bone broth today since I used all that I have during the holiday season. We have chicken bone broth and venison bone broth and use them kind of inter interchangeably, but a lot of times you need the chicken where more so because it has a little more fat in it. Um, and it's easy to make and it's good for you. A lot of times people will just make it and drink it as kind of like a hot toddy, like a tea. Um, I'm getting there with that. I'm not real keen on that. I kind of have a hard time with that flavor um, being so strong, but I'm practicing. So try that because it's very, very healthy for your immune system. But anyway, okay. So these chicken bats have been in the freezer for a while. We just keep them when we do our um, uh, chicken processing. We get in lots of chickens, whole chickens, and we process them out ourselves. So we keep our bone backs to make broth with. Um, so that's what this is. Been in the freezer for quite a while, doesn't matter really. Um, this is about probably five backs. Looks to be about four to five backs. Um, I'm gonna get about six to eight quarts out of, out of this. Um, so let's just get started. Um, you're gonna need your backs, of course, um, an onion. I use a sweet onion, a whole onion. Um, the bottom part of, of the celery, this, the rest of this celery is gonna go right back in my refrigerator for my salads and snacks and that kind of thing. The bottom of the celery has all the nutrients that I need to go over in there. Um, a few cloves of garlic, just, just throw a couple in, just however many. If you like things real garlicky, you can put more. Um, I usually put a little less, so, cause I can always put more later if I need to. Um, some bay leaves with six to eight quarts, I'm gonna need about two. If you're gonna make less, just one is plenty. And um, four to five carrots. I've got four because that's what was in my refrigerator. So see, that's how easy it is. Um, so let's get busy. I'm just gonna chop all these ingredients and then put my chicken backs over in my stew pot, fill it up with water and cook it down. So let's get busy doing that. All right, and that's all you do. You just chop your vegetables, put them over in your pot of water. I make a lot at one time. You don't have to make a lot. If you just have one chicken back, you can just make a small amount with just half an onion and a couple of carrots. It's real simple. One thing I didn't say a minute ago is um, about the salt. I do not put any salt in mine. Some people do, but just so I can know how much salt I'm putting in each of my recipes, I leave the salt out of the broth. And if you're making broth to just consume, just to drink, I know you're gonna need a little bit of salt in it. And that's probably another reason why I'm, I'm, I'm not real good at drinking it. But um, anyway, that's, that's it. Your veggies go over in your pot of water, your chicken bats go into your water um, on your stove top. I turn it on high until the water starts coming up to a good rolling bowl and put the lid on. It's gonna take it about probably at least 20 minutes to start a good boil, and then we'll come back and turn it down to a simmer. It needs to simmer for at least eight hours on low. Just let it go for the day. Don't even worry about it. And a quick kitchen tip. The celery that you have left over from chopping the bottom that's going in your stock, just wrap it in aluminum foil with some damp paper towel, just like so. Cover it up nice and good. Put it in the refrigerator just like that. You won't be throwing it out to the chickens in a couple of weeks. 
You'll be chopping it up for more stock. Okay, so the stock simmered for 10 hours yesterday. After the simmer, I turned the heat completely off and let the stock sit on the stove top for at least another couple of hours so it could come down to room temperature. Do not put anything hot off your stove straight into the refrigerator. Bacteria grows quickly that way. So always, no matter what you're storing in your refrigerator, bring it to room temperature if it's hot and on the stove. So that's what I did. Something else to let you know, you're gonna need something to strain through. I use cheesecloth. I use cheesecloth for a lot of things. Um, it works great for cleaning stock. I'll put a link to the cheesecloth that I use down in the description section of this video. If you want to order it from Amazon, you can. You can get it from a lot of places though. It's not hard to find. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I cleaned my sink already. I'm going to pull my hair back just for obvious reasons. And um, I'm going to bring the camera in a little closer so you can see the top of this stock and how it looks now that it's been in the refrigerator overnight. And um, you'll be able to compare what it looks like now as to what it's going to look like when we're finished. So you can see the fat and how it rises to the top once you store it in the refrigerator. That did not look that way before I put it in the refrigerator. The fat was still just floating around. So if you can put it in the fridge for overnight or a period of time, it does make cleaning it easier. So I use my wooden paddle and I start over and I just start collecting the fat that's on top and just simply drop it over in here. That gets what has coagulated just on the very top. So once you've skimmed the top and got that to your liking, it's time to just simply just strain the broth through strainers. I use a strainer on top all the way through to my cheesecloth for the first go around. And you're not going to see a ton of, um, you're not going to see a ton of difference, but you're going to see some. See how the pieces are catching in the strainer? And you don't have to use a strainer. You can use straight cheesecloth before I got these little strainers. I just did it straight through cheesecloth, but it's not a biggie. So there's the first round of straining. I strain mine three times, sometimes four, depending on how dirty it is. But I like the stock to be nice and clean when I use it. In the end, I'm always glad that I strained it as many times as I did. And just so you can see, let me bring this pot up. There's the stock after just the first straining. I add more cheesecloth on my second and third round. The more you have, the better it works. I don't worry with my strainer on the second and third round because the strainer is so much bigger than the cheesecloth. And I've gotten all the largest particles. Okay, so after straining the bra three times, this is what I ended up with. It's nice and pretty. 
there's still a little bit of floaties on the top. You're not going to get every single thing out that would be water if you did. So, but it's as clean as it's going to get, I think. And you can see maybe the maybe the camera will pick up. But when we started, the broth was about there, right below that ridge. And now it's about two inches, maybe two and a half down. So it did cook down a good bit. But anyway, that is all there is to making your own bone broth. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you liked this video and you'd like to see more things like this, just click the subscribe button and also give me a thumbs up so we'll know that you liked it. Enjoy your bone broth. I'm going to try this bone broth. Better than I remember it. Salt is the key. I could do it. Yeah, I could get used to it.